Yeah. It's a diabolically mislabeled Thank reproductive you. right, the right to choose, women's health care. And sadly, in the state of Ohio, our governor, like Pontius Pilate, washes his hands and refuses to even look in the direction of Roe v. Wade as he claims, proclaims its settled law. Make no mistake, subjecting the citizenry to an endless barrage of deceptive slogans and messaging is planned and purposeful with a defined goal in mind. Margaret Sanger's fellow genocidal eugenicists, Adolf Hitler, we've all heard of him, explained why the deception works. He said, and I quote, the receptivity of the masses is very limited. Their intelligence is small, but their power of forgetting is enormous. In consequence of these facts, all effective propaganda must be limited to a few points and must harp on these slogans until the last member of the public understands what it is you want him to understand by your slogan. As they endlessly spout these slogans, diabolical messaging, reproductive rights, the right to choice, women's health care, they're perfectly following the example of Adolf Hitler. To militate against the evil and to follow the example of Benedict and early Christians, the light that we must continually bring to the forefront to counter these lies is that abortion has nothing to do with reproduction or health care or women's rights. Abortion has to do with killing a human being who has been defined by an unjust law as a non-person. The Supreme Court in 73 legalized abortion by writing the opinion that the word person in the U.S. Constitution did not apply to preborn children. The same court ruled in the Dred Scott case in 1857 that the word person did not apply to slaves. The German courts in the 1930s ruled that the name that the word person did not apply to Jews. In America, we've added a third class of humans to the non-person category, the class of preborn children. Our Supreme Court, by ruling that abortion is the law of the land, put America on the side of former slavery supporters and Nazis. Since 1973, and in growing numbers, through prayer, through political action, and continual Christian witnesses in the public square, the pro-life community has militated against this terrible darkness in our land and has brought the light of truth Excuse me, to the Recent legislation billed as pro-life and supported with great fanfare by national pro-life organizations and for politicians looking to be able to claim that they are 100% pro-life when they're on the stump is an example of how a class of citizens can be created who are not afforded the first protection guaranteed in our Declaration of Independence. Remember the unalienable right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness? This legislation most often includes what are called exception clauses. Some legislation protects preborn children after a certain defined time of gestation from abortion. Uh -huh. That is, except those children conceived in rape or incest. This legislation determines that the lives of these children does not matter and they can be dismembered with impunity. The legislation, the current legislation to defund Planned Parenthood is another example. The bill is seriously flawed because its language creates that class of human beings who are excluded from protection by the bill. It defunds abortion except in the case of children conceived in rape and incest. 
For these children, their dismemberment will continue unabated. These children face execution solely because of the sins of their father. Killing them will not unrape their mothers. It will destroy the evidence of a violent crime to which she was a victim, and it will protect the criminal who committed the crime. I will end with two examples of the pro-life community shining a light on the darkness of Planned Parenthood's evil business of killing babies and harvesting their organs and parts for sale. This happened on August 27th, the 22nd and October 10th of this year. On the sidewalks of Planned Parenthood throughout the nation, tens of thousands of Christians cast aside political correctness spoke in public witness as they militated against the dark business happening behind the walls of those shameful operations. These witnesses brought light to the darkness. Of those two days, Geauga Right to Life and Lake County Right to Life, in conjunction with all of the other pro-life groups in Northeast Ohio, joined tens of thousands of others across the nation make known the barbaric practices in which Planned Parenthood was engaged. The speeches offered in Cleveland, in front of, uh, in actually Bedford Heights, uh, in front of the Bed, uh, Bedford Heights Planned Parenthood facility, by clergy and various supporters were very poignant and they stirred the conscience of those of us gathered there. On August 22nd, those of us numbered over 500 people. Let's say. One speaker, however, stood out among all the others, as good as they were. That silent speaker was represented in a tiny coffin and borne by a young man, followed by four other young men who were bearing flags, and a young woman who was holding a bouquet of flowers. And what was the speaker? And one old preacher. <laughs> I wasn't going to say old. <laughs> As the strains of amazing grace played on the bagpipes, the company of the casket arrived at center stage and found the crowd in somber silence available. and many tears. This, fake, this speaker represented the 60 million babies created in God's own image and likeness whose voices have been forever silenced. The truth of that speaker's message should be seared into the hearts of Christians and recalled every day. The light from that silent speaker shone the brightest and the darkness disappeared. The light was victorious as he spoke with absolute clarity. My life mattered. All lives mattered. Amen. What we're going to do next, for the first time, on your tables, you'll all see these. If you would pick one up, take it home, and we're going to take a look at it. Just place it where you see it. It gives you some time. You send it $5 or $10. How much it helps us. Because we fight this fight every day. 365 days. Then this John County Right to Life concert that's going to be held in Chesterland Sunday and uh, uh, tomorrow, yeah, at 7 p.m. They always put on a tremendous concert. It's one of our major fundraisers for the Right to Life so that we can continue to. There's no charge, just like today, there's no charge. Uh, but they, they do a tremendous job. And all that funds go to helping us save babies. We have to fight this war in the real city of five days a year. And then, we're signing up now. Last year, there was one million that marched in Washington, D.C. for the March for Life. And we're taking our bus like we do every year. We have to bring about 45 people down. We have 55 This is team. So we're there. You want to be a part of that? Pressure show with us. The papers are up there. Oh, March for Life. We leave January 21st. Oh. Come back uh -huh. oh. uh, on the 20th, 30th. Leave on a Thursday morning at 9, come back on Saturday about midnight. But we spent all day Saturday uh, at the uh, 
need some to the museum, the museum, right in Washington. The door the, all the businesses are closed, so off. we can go to all the museums, and the bus driver can drive us all around. So, uh, if you haven't ever gone on one of these, you really should have quite experience. Yeah. So, with that, what we're Pastor. going to do... Pastor? Yes. Sure. I just wanted to... Uh, I asked Beverly Goldstein to, to come have a seat with us because uh, she is a candidate for Congress also in, in the 11th district against Marsha Fudge. And uh, maybe a little later, Pastor can give her a chance to, to say a few words. She is the Northeast Ohio, not the Ohio expert on the Muslim earlier, uh, and one of the co founders of Act for America. And one of my prayers is that when I get to Washington, D.C., she can have the office down the door. So, I'm going to give her some time to speak today. So, there you go. Yeah, she's very active in uh, educating people. Obama's Muslims. Every time I say that from now on, I use the word Obama's Muslims, folks, because when, when people continue to say, doesn't he understand what's wrong? His policies failed. His policies have not failed. Well. This guy is, has been a genius, really. He is not on our side. You have to understand, he has never been on our side. We've been telling you that for eight years. And his policies are right on track. He's just been in America, piece by piece. We have to fight, and we have to fight with everything we've got. So, with that, what we're going to do is be there. So I'm going to ask for blessing for the food. He has no right. JP, you and Mike are going to be the first in line. It's very and simple. And then when everyone is, uh, we'll take a few minute break. Look at the literature on the table. We've got all kinds of literature on that table. There's films and that that you might want. The usurper. Uh, most of the pro-life literature is pro-life publication. All of these things help us to continue fighting to save babies. So uh, while we're doing that, and then we're going to come back. Uh, I'll some more tea while I can, more hot water. And after these folks have a chance to eat, then we're going to go back with JT next. Uh, you want to carry some of Okay, we're going to let the lady go first. Sure. Okay, we're going to go back with Bev, JT, and then Michael Post. How many of you have thought, come they believe, like I do, we've had a tremendous day of speaking. <laughs> and, and I was telling you about the article that Deborah writes, and he just read one of them. So. All right, so with that, I'm going to ask a blessing. So let's bow our heads. Lord, as we come before you, we petition you. We have so much to thank you for. Lord, all of us here, this this world, Lord, owes you everything. You owe us nothing. And we thank you for every blessing. As we gather here today, let us never forget that as we are gathered here in peace and in safety, as we're gathered here today, and we're about to receive a meal, how many people in this world have lived their entire life without ever having one meal like we're about to receive? Without ever having clean food, without ever having clean water, without ever having a roof over their head or shoes on their feet. And Lord, is, you know, the things that we can purchase tomorrow, the next tomorrow, the next day. So many think about, will I eat tomorrow or will it be the next day? Or will I live tomorrow or the next day? So as we come before you, we ask first that. You provide for our brothers and sisters throughout the world that are much more worthy than we are. Teach us, Lord, how to be eager continuously to do all that we can to provide for them and bless them like you have blessed us in every area. These things we ask in the precious name of our Lord, King of Kings, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, you guys go ahead. I just want to say one thing. December 7th is Monday. And I hope you all remember for in everything you've heard here today how bad things really could be. So I can't say it fairly to those people that are still buried on the Arizona in the world this coming Monday. Thank you. God bless Thank you. 
leaves the Muslim lower. It's not bad news. Now, how is she related? Right, well, if you guys pull apart where Penny lives, her backyard, put it up to our house on Norfolk Road, and then that backyard. Janie's one I remember because she was one of my age, but I don't know if I don't And the Presties all lived up there, you know, Charlie Presti, that's all from there. The Burbies are all there. Well, the pamphlets, uh, in the brochures, well, are free for the sake of you know, yeah. some of these. The lunches, you have one of these. Uh, that's like the that's 30 kids, right? That's right. That's got a great catalog. Personally, oh, my gosh. Right right and I remember, uh, I think the quality is good. Uh, it's just uh, you pay the whole price for what you get. It was a fibromyalgia attack. Well, I can tell you up here in Hillcrest, they have an excessive long waiting period in their emergency room. Yeah, no, actually, we had a wait, long wait last night. 
Yeah. I didn't get into acting in the back one, get a bed. It took me about almost two hours. Yeah, that's like about one too. But it was a Friday night though too. Yeah, well that's one reason I go out here to University Hospital. Yeah. To take me in right away, maybe a five minute wait. Yeah. How big is Yeah, Hilbert's Hospital is a better place. <laughs> yeah, I'll go on 44. Because there's a small yeah, hospital and they don't no way to sit next to the crowd. Problem with the Catholic uh, Church right now? They got they got a pope that's a uh, wayward communist. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> but try to tell them that uh, you know they don't. Their eyes are blind. Yeah. I think one of the best things to say to Catholics is rather than argue or attack their Catholicism, mm -hmm. basically tell them that uh, the only ones who are going to get to heaven are the true believers. It doesn't matter what denomination they are. Chili. It could be, I haven't asked. 
only a question. I'm only a consumer here. I'm not a chef. So I can't really give you a, a menu. <laughs> Yeah, I just tried to get one that was thick. So uh, I get my meat. And I gotta be careful.